uh, protections with a sensitivity, the I delta N value of uh, 30 milliamp to prevent this from happening. So below, if you can see on the left, 300 milliamp for higher sensitivity can be for use for indirect uh, contact of a person uh, that could cause a uh, risk of fire. Okay, so um, in a project itself, you can see if this installation doesn't come with a possibility of direct contact, um, do look into areas to see whether is there a possibility of indirect contact. All right, then at least with this, you know that what are the sensitivity range for your RCCB to use. Okay, so electrical fires are uh, one area of concern. So it can be caused by um, a lot of factors like uh, overload, can be caused by a short circuit, could be caused by an earth leakage current. Um, so this fire can also be for, from a form of uh, electric arcs caused by the degradation of cables, or it can even come from a loose connection. All right, so over in here, you can see that um, the dangers that when it comes uh, for RCD, uh, if it exceeds 30 milliamp, it might um, uh, cause certain dangers and um, like burn marks um, as you can see from the photo in here. Now, the focus that I have in this statement is that um, the operating time is to take into consideration as well, is not to exceed uh, 40 millisecond. All right, so this is uh, stated uh, in the code. Okay, so, so for um, areas to apply to, um, some of the key focus is also um, to look into the uh, socket outlets. Socket outlets are areas where it, um, it's constantly in contact with users. So as you can see in here, uh, socket outlets with rated current of SC32 m used for ordinary person. And also the second areas to look into areas are uh, like uh, portable equipment as well. So in addition for uh, domestic installations, like all the lighting oh, circuits, really? uh, all shall be protected with the RCDs as well. Okay. So I have a, a brief uh, sketch in here that give a more um, basic overview in terms of how to do a selection for the um, RCD. So you can see on the left is that if there is a possibility, to look into whether is there a possibility of uh, the direct contact risk. So if there is, um, do consider putting an RCCD, not that sitting 30 mm. But uh, if in installation, there's um, not, uh, if you don't see any possible the risk of direct contact, look into areas of indirect contact. So if there's indirect contact possible um, in the areas itself, then do consider putting the RCDs of not exceeding 100 mm. And then also look into areas where there, there's a risk of fire later on as well. So if there is a possible risk of fire, then do consider putting an RCD protection for not exceeding um, 300 um, milliamp. Okay, so um, 40 equipments um, uh, do take note are uh, the key uh, concerns because of 40 equipments or uh, other areas Sometimes where we, we, we might overlook that it might not cause any um, contacts with the users, but it can actually cause uh, fire as well. So that is why um, some of the installation, when we open up the panel itself, we do see that the um, fire protections, um, RCDs is not in place. So these are some areas to put into uh, considerations. Okay. So um, over in here, we talk about the electrical uh, beads as well. So the final circuit of the electrical beads okay, shall be protected by a 16 um, milliamp MCB and an RCCB of a voltage independent type, complying to SS97 uh, with 10 milliamp rated residual current. So as you can see in here, the electrical beads are comprised of uh, electrical equipment like water heaters, or uh, bathroom in wet areas. So the sensitivity, the setting should be that um, 10 milliamp rating. So, right? so uh, it's one of the um, higher sensitivity RCCB. Okay, so the, um, to achieve the selectivity as well, to take into consideration because you don't want the downstream the, um, causing the upstream to trip. So the, the, um, to take into consideration in terms of the rating at the upstream, which is the I delta N, 
that um, using a rules of three times that uh, for the, the, the upstream um, selection itself. So the upstream selection of the RCCB, as you can see in here, is three times the, of the RCCB from the downstream. So the top one is 30 million. So the downstream RCCB is at 10 million. Okay. All right. So um, from here, you can see the different um, standard rating of the RCCB. Okay, so uh, it talks about the sensitivity value as well. So the, you can see for the steps of the, the um, selections in terms of uh, the, the ampere rating start from um, 16M, 25M, 40M, 63M, up to 100M for a dual pole. And then the, um, for a four pole, it starts from 25M up to 100M. So use the um, right rating for your application itself. So, so once you have selected the, um, the application of the ampere rating, then look into the potential danger. So whether this uh, application, does it bring any danger for a person? Could there be a direct um, shock uh, um, possibility? If yes, then we use a 30 milliamp CCB. If there's any indirect contact danger, if yes, we, go, we use a 100 milliamp CCB. Okay. All right, so the next is the very, very quickly cover into the type of um, earning the electrical system. So uh, with the uh, amendments, we can see that there's a focus on TNS system. So this means that the TNC and the TNCS system is not um, applicable in the um, SS638 context itself. So um, just to give a basic overview what is uh, electrical um, LV systems for what's, uh, for TNS. So what is a T, what is an N? So I prepared one slide in here. So the T is the body of the electrical equipment that's not grounded, and N um, is the body that um, with the help of the conductor to ground. And then after that, um, there'll be the S system. So the S system actually is a separation between the neutral conductor and the ground, uh, ground conductor. So which means that the neutral and the ground cable is separated. So if you can see a C system, it means that the neutral conductor and the ground conductor is actually combined. All right. So it just means that TNS is the separate system and then C is a combined system. So with a very simple overview in here, the, um, the TNC and the TNCS system is not applicable in the SS638 code. So for, uh, the key focus um, is into the TNS, the IT system, and also the TT system. All right. So the, T, um, the IT system um, refers to the, the um, isolated or impedance um, earth neutral. So commonly, that can be found in like healthcare, medical equipment. You will get to see a lot of IT system. OK. All right, so um, this is just an introduction in terms of the different type of low voltage systems. Okay, next is that um, we're going to look into the selections of the different types of the RCD. So if you can see in here from A411.3.2.1, the um, care shall be taken to ensure that the um, simultaneous use of many items of equipment connected to the same circuit um, cannot cause unwanted tripping. All right, so we explains that if the downstream, this explains that if the downstream of the RCD uh, were to trip, uh, we try to design it in a way that it doesn't cause the, uh, uh, the upstream RCD to trip as well. All right, so selectivity have to be taken into consideration. So if you continue the, um, reading, is that, um, uh, is that for medical location in group one and group two, where RCD uh, are required, uh, only type A according to SS97, and SS480, or type B according to IEC 62423, shall be selected. All right, so it talks about the types of RCD that can be used in certain type of location. All right, so um, for those who are relatively new to um, RCDs, you all uh, could, um, the question might arise, what is a type A, what is a type B, or would there be other types as well um, um, in the selection? Would that be type F? Would that be um, other of uh, 
kind of um, AC selection, or I do see a lot of RCDs that comes with AC as well. So when to choose the right type of RCDs is also one of the key focus because by choosing a wrong one could uh, result to a lot of, um, I think so-called in the market, a lot of users, they call it nuisance tripping. The, in the SSX3 code, we call it the unwanted tripping. So I think this is one of the key areas that I will focus into um, to, to help the um, audience to understand a bit more about the basics in terms of what are the key types of RCDs, okay? So the, um, here is an overview in terms of what are the different selections available. So in the market, there is a type AC, there's type A, there's type A with a SI option, there's type F and type B. Okay, so the, what are the different types that, that actually refers, depends on your application itself. So which, what it means that you have to understand where you're going to apply it, what kind of application they are using, are they using like EV chargers or are they using um, drives, variable speed drives. And from there, by understanding the application will enable you to select the correct type of RCDs, the types of RCDs, all right? So uh, this give a um, overview in here so in this slide, the type of RCDs that's uh, related to the ability to detect the um, earth leakage, depending on the type of loads um, as per the uh, IEC standards. So um, the important selection criteria is that for the RCD to select, um, to, to withstand the particular environment and also the application. Like for instance, for the type AC RCD is dedicated for linear loads. So what are linear loads? Linear loads are example like um, lightings, um, water heaters, electrical heaters, and so on. So these are considered as linear loads. All right. So the, if you have applications that is more for the, um, the things like for voltage transformers or computers, induction cookers, um, then do consider the, to choose a type A RCD because uh, these are loads that comes with uh, rectifiers right inside itself. So later I'll break down, they actually got to do with the waveforms. The waveforms helps to guide the selections. Okay, the type ASI refers to, um, is more immunized in a way that it's an enhanced version to uh, withstand more for harsh environment, um, especially to the electromagnetic disturbance. Um, these are areas to be used. So for more critical device with rectifiers, um, voltage, uh, voltage transformers, um, do consider using the SI version. Of course, we do have another one, which is called the type B SI as well, okay? And then um, for type B is dedicated for the same load for type A, type AC. So basically whatever that type A and type AC can do, the type B also can do it. So the coverage is much more wider. So it's also more suitable for um, application like for the AC to DC conversion products. So what are those? Example are like um, if you have projects or installations for EV chargers, the photovoltaic systems, or even um, speed drive, um, synchronous motors, all these things, um, type B will be a good fit for this kind of application. So if you can see in here, um, I do like this chart is because um, in summary, it, it does act like, you know, like a, a Russian doll. A Russian doll, which means that like, if you select a type B, it comes with the features of type F, type A, type AC. But if you select, a, for instance, a type A, RCDs, it come with a feature of a type AC as well, all right? So like just now what I've mentioned, it's got to, got to do with the uh, waveform. So a type AC um, RCD focus a lot on the sinusoidal uh, residual current, all right? That is why it's more suitable for linear load. Now a type A is also suitable for sinusoidal residual current, but on top of that, you get an additional of a pulsating DC residual current. So it's something like an add-on, all right? So that's why 
is more suitable for those kind of um, single phase rectifier loads. Okay, so of course in the market there is also Type F. Type F will come with the features of Type A, C, and A. All right, and together it comes with a mixed frequency addition as well. So it's very suitable for single phase uh, frequency converters load. And then Type B comes with all the features from Type A, C, Type A, Type F. So it comes with addition of uh, the smooth DC the waveform. So it's suitable for three phase uh, rectifier load. So like I mentioned earlier, it can be used for EV chargers, photovoltaic systems, the variable speed drive, and all this kind of application. Okay. So when you select uh, RCD, there's always a waveform that's actually attached or printed on the component itself. So if you see this uh, wave shape, uh, is referring to a sinusoidal uh, residual current. All right. So if you see this symbol on the product itself, you will, if you can recognize it, you know that oh, okay, this one is for the uh, type AC uh, application. So when you see an AC application, generally you will know that it is for linear load. So when it's for linear load, it can be used for the, basically like your house lighting, your household appliances, the water heaters. Okay, so uh, this type of uh, RCDs, they detect and trips on a pure uh, 50 hertz sine wave. All right, so which means that the expected fault is of the same frequency of uh, 50 hertz. So to troubleshoot the, um, the, in terms of tripping the fault, my experience on the supply side of the conductors or from the load um, that is sensitive um, or that is resistive or linear. All right, so these are some areas to look into in terms of troubleshooting. Now, this, when you see this waveform uh, symbol imprinted on the RCD, so you can see um, with the previous one, you see there's only one wave shape, right, which is the sinusoidal. This one, there's a second wave shape below, which is called the pulsating DC residual current. All right, so the, with these two wave shapes, you can actually uh, do more. All right, so the pulsating DC residual current waveform um, can be caused by diode or thyristors rectifier circuit in electronic loads. So that is why it is suitable for um, areas like um, induction cookers, uh, frequency converters, computers, uh, all these have this uh, pulsating DC current um, in this kind of application. Okay. Next is that I'll just very quickly jump right into type B. All right, so type B is that I can detect basically all the wave shape that I've uh, mentioned earlier from type A to AC. Um, together, it composites with multi-frequencies as well as the smooth DC residual current. So in addition, the tripping condition are defined um, in different frequencies as well um, from 50 Hertz, also can go up to one kilohertz. All right. So the, um, the, for a type B application the, um, can be used for uh, example, variable speed drive, PV system, EV charging system, and also uh, medical equipments. All right. So key, the um, key selection criteria is that just to look into the wave shape and see based on your applications, does it uh, have a match in there? So if you have a match, then basically you can, uh, you can choose a type B for your application. All right. So uh, very quickly, I just want to share a video in here. So this video will give a more clearer overview in terms of the different types of RCDs that we offer from Schneider Electric.
Okay, so all right. So the, um, just now, what we have here is that we have shared the different types of um, the RCDs. So it does ranges from the, um, you can see actually started from type A all the way to type B and also for the SI uh, type, it does comes with the immunity for interference as well. Okay, so the, um, moving next is that, uh, okay, so okay, with this slide is that it talks about the automatic uh, disconnection in um, in case of fault, so care shall be taken to ensure that uh, simultaneous use of um, the many items of equipment connected to the same circuit that it doesn't cause uh, unwanted tripping in the uh, RCDs. So in medical conditions like what I mentioned before, that um, only type A with SS97 or SS480 or type B according to IEC 62423 shall be selected. So depending on the possible fault uh, current arising from a type AC RCDs, arising so a type AC RCD shall not be used in such an application All right so the um, next is that I'm going to do a, a quick share in terms of the, um, the types of RCDs that is more towards the SI series because it does have um, a higher resistance in terms of its uh, immunity to the um, to disturbances so what are the disturbances that we are looking into is that for SI series, the um, RCCBs is that is able to, is tested accordance to um, the harmonics and also is tested accordance to transient disturbances. And also thirdly, if you can see below, is tested accordance to electromagnetic um, um, compatibility as well. So you can see these are the few key areas the um, R&D, the research and development team, when they produce their RCCD. So they actually look into these key areas and they bring up the rating so they can actually uh, provide um, a higher rating to be supplied uh, for the user to use. So uh, for instance, if you look into the um, transient disturbances, the lightning um, over voltage itself tested at 1.2 slash 50 microsecond can go up to as high as 4.5 uh, kilovolt. All right, or even for instance, the harmonics itself is tested to a test wave of one kilohertz. The industrial grade um, uh, RCCB can go up to as high as eight times um, the I delta N for Earth leakage current. All right, so basically just to share this, um, offers available in the market that if you are encountering nuisance tripping, there are products that's actually been tested on a higher rating itself to give a uh, users uh, um, some options to avoid all these nuisance tripping. Okay. All right. So um, in here it talks about compliance as well. So in terms of compliance is with the IEC six one eight zero zero five one. So that's for the adjustable speed um, electrical power drive systems. So it makes this RCCB more suitable to be used with variable speed drive as well. And also it comes with compliance of the um, 624771 for safety requirements for power electronics converter systems and equipment. And um, this makes the RCCB more immune to the environment of interference as well. And also on top of that, uh, some additional features like there's a visible protection in terms of LED indications and also it can be compatible with some of the wireless um, energy monitoring system. All right. So very quickly, I'll just go to a next video in here just to share on the SI uh, type for RCCB. Hi, Ray. Uh, sorry to interrupt. I think we have some, uh, we can't hear the video sound. Mm, okay, so I will reshare again. Yep.
Okay, Mandy, can you see my screen? Uh, not yet. Okay, well, give me a minute. Now we can see your screen. Can you hear the voice? No, we can't hear any sound. Okay, give me a minute. How is it now? Yeah, we can hear sound now. Instead. In commercial buildings, equipment such as elevators, escalators, and air conditioning are crucial to keeping occupants comfortable and on the move. Continuity of service is vital, and nuisance tripping can put this equipment out of order and take up your maintenance staff's valuable time. Now you can prevent this. Schneider Electric has developed a new Acti-9 BSI type RCCB, as recommended by the latest IEC standards. Maximizing occupant safety and comfort at all times can be tricky without the use of BSI type RCDs. In fact, A type residual current devices simply cannot provide adequate protection for speed drives on their own. For instance, elevators are fed directly from the grid and the IEC standard requires installation of a B-type RCD at the incomer. And you have the peace of mind that this device has been tested with all of Schneider Electric's speed drives offers. HVAC units in commercial buildings are generally located outside, which means that pumps are often far from the electrical panels. This can cause network disturbances as well as nuisance tripping. The new Acti-9 BSI Type RCCB offers visible protection in all of these situations, thanks to its clear markings, LED indicator, it also delivers maximum uptime. This solution is also compatible with the PowerTag wireless sensors and Acti-9 gateways, which allow you to manage your energy efficiently. Protect people and property in compliance with the latest standards with Schneider Electric's Acti-9 IID BSI type. Okay. All right, so next is that uh, we're going to go into the um, areas where we're going to focus in terms of um, unwanted tripping. All right, so you can see in here, um, in this uh, context itself, um, care shall be taken that um, to ensure the simultaneous use of many items or equipment connected to the same circuit cannot cause uh, unwanted tripping on the um, RCD. All right, so um, in short is that if you have too many equipment connected to the same circuit, they make it uh, a trouble or hassle to uh, when it comes to troubleshooting. So in the event when there's a uh, earth leakage, um, this will make the situation very difficult to trace. So I have seen some of the electrician, they have to start from the subboard, look at the MCB labels, try to identify which equipment is causing, causing the fault. And then uh, after that, um, when they try to find a fault, they use the meters to identify and investigate um, where is the one that's giving them the abnormally low resistance um, with the voltage. So um, their investigation will later go into areas like um, a possibility of a faulty plug. Sometimes they identify the water heaters um, that is causing the um, earth leakage. So um, that is why the, during the um, troubleshooting is also uh, have to be done by skilled personnel because um, during the troubleshooting phase, they have to turn off all the MCB. And then also the, what they do is that they have to um, sometimes open up one by one to identify where is the root cause or the culprit MCB. Then from there on, they can actually zoom in further to identify the, where is the faulty equipment. Okay. All right. So um, in here, uh, just to highlight is that the advantage of um, dividing your circuit will help to reduce the possibility of unwanted tripping. Um, dividing your circuit, I would say, also will help to help you to um, zoom in into your investigation when there's a fault as well. So that is why there are a lot of benefits in terms of um, when you do your design, divide, dividing your circuits um, will help in the later stage as well. All right. So um, 
these are one areas that I want to highlight because the next few slides, we're going to talk about unwanted tripping. So unwanted trippings are areas where sometimes when there's, a, example, when there's rain or there's a storm and then uh, power goes off. So when power goes off, it can be very annoying. So how you, I do experience a lot of questions um, from um, electricians or from consultants that how come when it rains, um, there's a trip on the RCCB. So uh, it sometimes it does comes with the, uh, um, the equipment itself. But um, the problem arises that imagine for your home um, when the RCCB trip and you are out of the house, you realize that there's no power to your essential um, equipment like your fridge. You lose power for a few hours. So that is something that, that you doesn't want it to happen. So the um, key point is that lightning searches can cause equipment to malfunction resulting to leakage current. All right, so these are one areas to look into as well. All right, so um, one of the key areas to address is that um, um, when you do a selection of your RCDs, the RCDs, they do send for transient testing as well. All right, switching transient to be exact. So uh, there's a rating in there. If you select a rating that is much more higher, it could be one of the aspects that helps you to eliminate the possibility of these nuisance tripping. Okay. So um, in electrical network, um, you always are subject to over voltage. It need not be like um, lightning strikes. Sometimes it can be also be from switching of certain equipments that can cause this transient as well. So this sudden um, in rush that's causing these large transients to come in. Um, in terms of voltage and current, that it can be in inductive and capacitive state. All right, so that is why um, even when we send the RCD for testing, it's tested on a wave shape of 1.2 microseconds. So 1.2 microseconds, what it does is if you can see the wave shape here, if it tested, it goes up to a U max, a maximum peak, and then by 50 microseconds, it comes down to half its value. Now, this is the same testing that you apply for search arrestor as well. All right. So that is why the, um, when you choose the selection of your RCCB, you look at your UMAX value to see what is the highest value it can offer to you. All right. So this is also one of your selection criteria. OK. All right. So um, if you can see in here, oh, sorry, just now I missed out one slide. Um, there's also the 8 slash 20 microsecond wave shape. So this is also another transient wave shape that they have been tested. So within 8 microseconds, it goes up to a maximum peak. And within 20 microseconds, it comes down to half its value. All right. So if you can see into here, the rating of all this is actually been tested for such arrestors. They apply it into the... RCCB as well. Okay, so your RCD device, even for your RCBOs, all these things, they do have a peak value. By selecting a higher peak value, will actually helps you to avoid the nuisance tripping. All right. We also, um, in terms of the, the induced over voltage, is also one of the areas to look into as well. Okay. All right. So next. Um, Another possible cause for nuisance tripping are uh, more on the environmental factors. So environmental factors are like uh, if you have a box or a condition where it's humid or cold that results to a lot of condensations, or it can even be in a, a factory area where it's dusty conditions, this can actually cause the RCD to malfunction. All right, so the, because in the RCDs, they do have um, special alloys that can be used. And once it's been affected by external condition, it can result to either uh, corrosions, rust, or even if it's in a dusty environment, it can result to blockage in some of the internal mechanical parts. All right, so the, um, there'll be also in SS3, I talk about the IP rating of the box, that uh, the enclosure that you use can be, if uh, you will use the right IP rating, that can be used to address the conditions um, that is caused by this kind of environment. Like for instance, if it's a dusty environment, okay? Now, the next area to look into 
that can cause new strains tripping. Uh, these are not so uh, dangerous, but sometimes it can cause quite a lot of uh, disturbances um, to your um, projects. So the two factors is a combination in term uh, for transient together with a continuous high frequency voltage equipment connected in series. All right, so this continuous high fr frequency voltage equipment, they have a superimposed of a uh, uh, 50 hertz on the nominal network voltage. So there is a presence of the capacitors that is formed between the electrical network um, and the earth. It can be the this um, earning frame or could be a metal case. And this natural capacitance once formed between, it can be formed also between the cables, between the live cables and the earth cables. Okay. So once the capacitor is formed, it, exposed, it gives exposure of the high frequency voltage and such stray current can actually trip the breaker, all right, when flowing, to, um, when the leakage current is flowing to earth. So this kind of investigation is one of the most difficult one and so can be one of the most challenging one because it's often very difficult to identify because you need to find out um, in terms of the timeline, um, in terms of the duration of when this actually occurs and also the interference and also in terms of the frequency of such occurrence um, could be could vary as well depending on how the users use the load. So an example uh, in here is like a non-linear load such as uh, equipment like IT equipment, very common we have um, things like the um, light electronic alas um, or even for a series of low frequency uh, equipment could be photocopier machines so this could actually um, cause a very um, the tripping of the breakers because they are continuously um, producing the leakage current. All right. So um, I have an example in here. Um, so over in here is that you can see an electronic loads that is generated from a low frequency continuous leakage. So the example in here is that, um, for instance, we use an illustration of a computer one computer can generate a leakage current of 50 hertz, averagely about maybe 0.5 milliamp. Okay, so though this is uh, insufficient to cause a trip in the RCCB, but when it's connected in series, it means that five of these equipment can emit a leakage of 7.5 milliamp of leakage current. All right, so when the sixth computer is being connected um, in a series itself, the leakage current generated enough is sufficient to trip. Well, when you turn it on um, the, um, the, the equipment, there'll be an inrush. So the inrush of this switching effect um, will cause the tripping of the RCD itself. All right, so these are one areas to look into when you connect um, all the um, low frequency continuous load that in series can result to a tripping of the RCCB as well, okay? So how to overcome such a problem is to ensure that there's um, not to exceed 25% of the sensitivity rate, which is the I delta N of the leakage protection device, which means that if your continuous leakage current um, should be kept as low below uh, 7.5 M, all right, assuming 25% of uh, 30 milliamp is 7.5. So you try to use at the not exceeding a range of 25%. Okay, so um, I do have a, a working in here to give a clearer illustration. So the estimated value example for a fax machine is one milliamp, printer one milliamp, workstation two milliamp, photocopier machine 1.5 milliamp, even long cables as well, all right? So uh, it can produce a 1.5 milliamp of leakage current per 100 meters. So you're using an example in here you can see um, an illustration that um, I'm using a five circuit load of a photocopier machine and one unit of RCD. So um, for um, a 30 milliamp RCD for 230 volts, we use 25%, which is 7.5 milliamp. So if the photocopier machine is uh, for one unit is about 1.5 milliamp, five of them have already produced 7.5. All right, so which means that if you use within this 25% a rule of thumb itself, it gives you a guideline not to exceed the number. Okay, so all right, so uh, with this, I think I have uh, 
come to the, um, this 60 minute session and I've covered on the first part of um, today's sharing. So in summary is that um, in today's sharing, I've covered the key areas in terms of the um, areas of unwanted tripping. All right, so unwanted tripping, just to summarize, there are a few key areas to look into. Areas like um, the lightning searches the, are one of the areas that can cause nuisance tripping, your environmental factors, and also the low frequency or high frequency continuous leakage current device. When you put them in series, this can cause um, unwanted tripping on your RCDs. And also, the, um, the, um, we have talked about the different types of uh, RCDs to use as well. So we have gone through like what is a type A RCD, a type AC RCDs, and also a type B RCDs and what kind of applications um, um, that they can apply for. And also we talk about the um, LV system as well. So um, TNS is the key focus, followed by TT systems. Uh, these are the two um, the common one um, that is commonly that we see in our daily projects. Um, also, of course, in IT system where we see, in, um, like for me, I will see a lot in um, medical equipments, they do use IT system as well. And also we talk about the ratings like um, 30 milliamps to use for your protections and when to use for direct and indirect protections. Okay, so um, this is the summary that I have for today's 60 minute session, um, though it's short. Um, in the next session, I will share on day two. So day two, uh, later on after the, when I pass over to Mandy, because right now we will go through the, um, some of the questions that are prepared for you guys to see whether the, what the, your take away, the key takeaways from today's session. All right, then later on, I will share with you what we are going to share on day two. Okay, so Mandy, over to you. Yep, thanks, Ray. Yep, thanks, yeah, so, Ray. Yeah, so I think, I think most have, most have um, um, joined into the session already. Um, so we have a Mentimeter session uh, provided by Ray. So it's a series of four questions. So with your phones or laptop, please uh, go to www.menti.com. Type in the code 286793. Uh, yeah, so let me share my screen now. Yeah, so as Ray was speaking earlier, I could see many of um, the audience has joined in. Um, we will start when in another 30 seconds or so. Yeah, so please go to menti.com 286793. Yeah, so if this is a, just a series of four questions to test your understanding on this session. So it's fastest fingers first. Whoever gets the correct answer at the shortest time will get the largest number of points. Okay, I think we have a good number, so we'll start now. Okay, so this is the first question. Well, we have very quick responses. Okay, another 20 seconds to go. So what is the selection criteria for this RCD? Oh, we have mixed answers. Yeah, maybe Ray can explain it, uh, share this or this later. Okay, now we move on to the next question. Okay, so in the expense of time, I'll move on to the next question. So this is the second question. So for Andy, the electrician, which suitable RCCB he should choose? Okay, we're counting down that 20 seconds.
Okay, so uh, actually B is the correct answer. Um, so we'll move on to the third question. Okay, third question. So which kind of RCD should Andy the electrician choose for his EV charging in, uh, installation? Yeah, most of you all got it correct for this question. Okay, last one, last question. Yeah, so this is a multiple choice answer. So uh, which are the areas um, that Andy should consider? Yeah, I think more of um, us got this correct. Okay, so yep, this is the end of the quiz. Let's see who uh, has won. Yep, thank you everyone for your participation. The winner is uh, Paul Tan. Uh, we don't have a uh, any physical awards to give to you, but if you have any questions, uh, we will pass you Ray's uh, email. So if you have any questions regarding this webinar, you can let him know. Okay, I'll pass uh, the time back to you, Ray. Yeah, Ray, please unmute your mic, Ray. We can't hear you. Okay, uh, can you hear me now? Yes, can hear. Okay, so I will share my screen again. Okay, so the congratulations, Paul. The, um, right, so the, the, thank you, Mandy, for, for arranging this uh, mentee session. So, the, um, yeah, I think with today, the, it's, a, it's a very short 60 minute session. I will try, I basically try to put in as much um, sharing as possible. The, um, so that is why the, I have to split this session even just for a very simple topic on the residual current protection um, into two days. So um, the first 60 minute session today, we shared um, basically the protection for direct, indirect contacts. Uh, hopefully you have learned what are the different types, just an introduction about the different types of RCDs that's available. Um, there are options that to use for um, uh, for more industrial grade RCDs, which is uh, on the SI series, and also um, in terms of what are the, the um, possible costs for unwanted trippings, because I do see this is a very uh, common um, issues that I see users and um, electricians they do face in the market itself. So for day two, hopefully uh, you all will sign up as well. We're going to go into the remaining topics like what are RCBOs, what are RCMs? Then we're going to talk about the basics, okay? In terms of the what is the earth loop impedance. Um, from the earth loop impedance, we can share with you uh, what are the different offers in terms of the earth leakage relays. Um, and then we're going to cover um, the selectivity in terms of the RCDs. So uh, selectivity of RCDs, apart from selecting the um, I delta N selection. Um, the timing of the RCDs also plays a big part in terms of uh, when you're doing the selection. So I will guide you through in terms of how to do this selection process so that uh, when your downstream trips, it doesn't cross the upstream to trip as well. 
And then also um, on the last part, I will touch on more on some of the important locations that is uh, mentioned in the SS638. So what are the areas to look into and how do we apply our RCD protection in those areas? All right, so next is that we're gonna go into a Q&A session. So the Q&A sessions will enable the audience to type your questions into the chat box. And then with those chat box, uh, we will try to answer the, a few of them. Of course, the remaining, uh, we will take it offline to answer it and it will be posted up by working with the marketing comms team together. Hi, we have one question from Tan Hui Kun. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, so uh, please, uh, check, please check the chat. chat. The chat. Yeah, so the use of uh, LED lights using converters. So type AC should not more be in use. Okay, I will say that for um, the LED lighting, I think is one of the areas that I need to also go and do a checkout on more. So because I want to give you a more accurate answer. So maybe for this, uh, um, I will go and do a, a checking on this so I can post the answer to you um, uh, once this session is over. Okay, that, that's, that, all, the that's all the questions, so we can move, so along. We can move along. Okay. All right, so uh, if there's no further questions, uh, we, are still op we are also open to questions uh, after the session, so feel free to email to us, to Mandy. Um, she will do the compilation of all the questions. And then uh, moving next is that uh, we also will share with you all what are the upcoming um, topics that we have Schneider Electric have prepared for you all. On the 30th of April on 11 a.m., we have prepared um, the innovation talk for tight budget for variable speed drive. Discover an easy solution. All right, so the Mandy will also share out this uh, registration link to you all. And then on the 6th May, uh, yet again will be my session. I'll be sharing the, the remaining topics in this uh, SS638 session. I will still continue to stay on the chapters for residual current device. And then once it's done, I will slowly move on into the other chapters as well. That falls on the 6th of May, 11 a.m. And then um, on May 5th, 14, 21, 28 May, we have other learning content and series available. So um, those will be available in the link as well. Okay, so with this, um, Mandy, do you want to end off the session in here? Yep, thank yep. you. Thank you. Yeah, so we have come to the end of this webinar. Thank you all for attending. Please remember to register your attendance um, through, the, through this link. You can either scan the QR code or get it, um, get it from the chat. Yeah, so for PEB PDU points, please remember to register your attendance. Please be reminded that you have to attend both the part one and part two, which is happening in 6 May in order to receive the PDU points. Yeah, so for any further questions, you may contact us, um, Ray Khan, at um, his email or Schneider Electric Singapore at our Schneider Electric email. Yeah, so thank you all for attending this webinar and being a great audience. Uh, we'll see you soon in our next webinar. Hey, all right. Thank you, everyone, for your time. I'll see you in the next session again. Cool. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ray. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.